most educators I've talked to have said this last school year, the 2021, 2022 school year was way harder than the one prior. I've heard that as a consensus everywhere. And I just kind of accepted that and under, and just kind of thought that's the truth. But today's guest, I asked her, why do you think that is? And one of the things she said really resonated with me is the idea that basically we were expecting something much more and it didn't happen the way that we wanted to. And, you know, we were disappointed at expectations. It's something I actually hadn't heard. And, and maybe this is common knowledge to you, but I thought it was an interesting perspective that sometimes when we have these high expectations for things, they don't live up to what we were hoping for. It's actually harder than something that's just really, really tough all the time. And it's just kind of a, a disappointing aspect. But the other question they asked is like, what do we do going into the next school year? How do we get to that? How do we get to that point where there is some consistency? And she talked about the notion of flexibility, you know, really understanding people. And this is why I really taught, love talking to Shauna, uh, Shauna Miller from Louisville ISD. She's an absolutely incredible educator, incredible leader, someone I've really connected with over the years and really glad to be able to call a friend. And the thing that when she talked, she's really focused on how do you serve the people in front of you, not get focused on the programs, not get focused on all this stuff, but working backwards from people and really ensuring that they get what they need to be successful, not, and really knowing who they are as individuals and having that experience. And I think that's something that comes through in this conversation. You're going to learn a ton from Shauna about education, leadership. She's a wonderful person, a wonderful mom. And uh, just an incredible leader, and I'm blessed to have her. So thanks for joining me on another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed, y'all. Texas, shout out, right? Can I do that? Can I say y'all? Y'all. <laughs> One of my favorite people in the world who just absolutely inspiration and we joke around quite a bit, but um, I have loved your work. You actually remind me of someone else I really think is one of the best people in the world. I, I was thinking about this. Do you know who Deidre Raymer is? Do you know Deidre Raymer? No. Deidre Raymer is Wisconsin Shauna Miller. I got to introduce really? you. Really? Yeah. yeah. You two remind me of each other because, because I just both your, um, and just, just to give you a little bit about Shauna, Shauna is, uh, one of the most personal people I've ever met. She is totally visionary in her work. She so great at relationships, just easygoing. I really appreciate you. And, and I know Louisville is blessed to have you. New job alert, new job. <laughs> the chief of staff, which yes. I didn't even know. Is that a new, was that a job that existed before? No, it was not. So like you, it's like very like, it's like, presidential type of job that's like a very unique i've never heard of that title before in education well i hope not to be doing all those press right. conferences like yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the teacher's stuff yeah that's probably a good uh, idea. So, shauna hey well, just so everyone gets to know a little bit about you tell us who you are tell us what you do today tell us how you got there all right awesome shauna and um so i just been um named for chief of staff in louisville so um, my route to that role never knew this. I, again, like George said, this wasn't even a position. So it wasn't like I was like, I'm going to be, you know, chief of staff, but um, taught elementary school for 11 years, um, all of them in Texas, except for two years, I um, went up to Jinx, Oklahoma for two years and then quickly came back to Texas. Um so uh, 11 years in elementary educate, uh, teacher and then went into um, the campus leadership role. So was an AP for a couple of years and then was a principal at the elementary level for a couple of years and then moved to central office. And I've been in central office um, for six or seven years in professional learning. So we support um, all of those except for a couple of years in Lewis ISD. And we support um, our leaders, our um, teachers, our support staff, and you know, just continuously learning and growing so that we can best support our students and our community. So it's been great fun. And um, 
our district is kind of going through a transition right now. We just have a new superintendent. And as part of that process, she's really looking, you know, our kindergartners right now um, are going to be graduating after the year 2030, Hmm. which when you hear 2030, like that's just, wow. And so she's like, I need someone to really help me with what does that look like? And how do we make sure we're hitting the goals right so that our kids are ready to thrive um, in their own future once they hit past 2030. So that's how I, that's how I got into the role that I am now. Okay. So, so like, I want you to actually dig a little bit more deep into this. So chief of staff, okay. it is a new role. I, mm-hmm. I actually, I was blessed to be able to, um, in my central office career, go into a role that didn't exist, which actually gives you a lot of opportunity to create something that didn't mm-hmm. exist before. Um, and there's no expectations, right? Cause you're, you're never going to be worse than the last person. Cause you're the first, right? So it's only right. downhill after that for me. Right. So like, how do you envision this new job? Like what, it, what do you see as part of your role of doing this? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I'm just learning about it, getting out there, listening to a lot of people, gathering some input. Amazing enough, I just talked to first, second and third year teachers uh, two days ago. So these are our new teachers yeah. that, that have just started into education and we were lucky enough to have them land here in Louisville. And so talking with them, I wanted to know about like, what will make you stay in education right. and what will make you stay in our district? Like how, do, how do we get you to feel connected and, and really, really be driven by a purpose that's bigger than just yourself. Um, so I'm kind of on that listening tour right now. And they had a make, I mean, just talking to them, I, I already have all these things in my head of how do you right. make that happen? So I envision of, This role really, um, culture will be a lot of it, how to create a culture internally and externally where people want to be part of this um, community and that our students thrive in this community. Um, So, you know, what what does that look like as far as our culture? What does that look like as far as our goals that we need to have, priorities we need to be focused on? And then I think a big part of the role is going to be making sure everyone's on the same page. So, when you know we serve a little over fifty thousand students, um, and and we're across several different uh, cities, and so how do you make sure everyone is on the same page and working the same same direction in order to achieve that? Well, we actually we when I was in central office, one of the things that we did, and I've I've had some really good conversations about this with people in the past, is that we decided to make one vision. Now, when I say we decided to make, I'm not saying the superintendent and a couple other handful of people. I'm talking about, we brought community in, students, staff, uh, parent community, business community, saying like, what, what do we see as the vision for the school? And we went through that process and then we actually got a bunch of information. We actually cre- started creating a vision then we refined it based on that feedback, right? So it was like a really interesting community process. But one of the things that was eliminated was that you had the district vision and then all the schools had their visions and then the tech department had their vision and the curriculum department had their vision, which didn't really con- coincide with the tech department. And there was like some, right. And we said, no, 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 it's one. So like part of your role is to say like, Hey, in this department, this is how we bring that vision to life. And so that pathway can look different, but the end goal is the same. And it was the same thing too, because I think the one of the conversations I remember having this actually with someone in Texas, like, no, 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 each place should have their district. I'm like, do you know how hard it is to get people to like buy into one? So now if it's six and which one mm-hmm. is more important, the, the school that I work at where I see the people every day or the district one, right? But I right. think there has to be that flexibility in, you know, as you said, you have different, like such a wide range of schools in different areas, how school A gets there could look different than school b because i think a lot of times we ask for innovation but we also say you must follow the exact same path not necessarily like you got to figure out your own way to get but we're all going to the same place so like how how, do you see like is that part of your work is that something that you're doing right there like how how are your schools kind of dealing with that yes so um we actually just started that process we so what you described we call that like your strategic plan and we did that um a couple of years, maybe six years ago. And so we're actually talking with the board right now um, on what is it that they want, 
maybe not redo that whole thing, but refining it and, right. and really reviewing it and making sure, you know, the board sets your, your direction of what is it you really want to be held to the same? What is it you really want us right. to be known for? Be, and then I think we have that strong with our vision, but then, um, yes, is everyone clear on that vision? And, right. you know, when I was on a campus, we had the same vision as the district, but our mission was a little different. And right. so, I think making sure that we're all aligned and also, you know, if I'm a parent and I have two or three kids in different schools, you still want that. I mean, our theme for um, our branding is one LISD. And so even though we have 70 campuses, it's really all part of Louisville. And so when you're a staff member, a student, a parent in Louisville, what does that mean? What are you guaranteed and promised? Mm -hmm. Um, That's really what we're working on. And then, how do all the, you're right about departments that technology is supporting yeah. one way, curriculum's another. And so making sure another interesting thing that I'm starting to tackle, especially coming out of, well, I don't want to say coming out of COVID. I might've just jinxed this, but right. um, um, what we've really. Um, coming out of COVID and going into monkeypox. Right. Right. Who knows what's ahead of us, right? Who knows what is ahead of us? But there is a lot that we keep adding to people's plates, but we're not really good at taking things off of people's plates. And so um, we're really looking at what is it that's on people's plates? And if this is really what we say is our vision and mission and what we're trying to achieve, is Mm -hmm. everything on that plate helping us get there or what should not be on that plate and what might be missing? And so that's something else that I'll be tackling in this in this new role yeah and i think that's actually one of the hardest things i've done with staff is actually saying they're like hey we're overworked i'm like, okay so tell me some things that you don't think we need to do anymore and they actually like i remember they had a really hard time with it like mm-hmm. to say part of it i'm like no we have to make some decisions here like we have to say do we need to do this before and you want them to be a part of that process but i think a lot of staff they want <laughs> they feel like they kind of have to do everything a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Cause mm-hmm. they don't want to leave anything out. They want to make sure that every kid has an opportunity, but I think that's one of the hard decisions we have to make sometimes. Like we always talk about what, you know, all the things that we're going to do, but we struggle with what we have to sacrifice sometimes. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a, sh- a shift. The The one thing that you said, it reminded me, I think is kind of a goal. Um, kind of listening to you is in, let's say three years, Will a teacher in one of your schools say, I work at this school? Or will they say, I work with Louisville ISD? And I think part of that is, this is the beauty. If you do it right, and I know I know this is not like just starting with your job right now. I know this has been a process that you've been working on, especially with you know the one uh, LISD uh, vision, is that it's not that they are just like indoctrinated to believe that they say that thing because we want them to say the thing, but they realize the work they do in their classroom actually has an impact on the entire district and beyond. Do you know what I mean? Like they're part of something like to really give people that opportunity to be p- part of something larger. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's one of the goals that we had. So when you're looking at some of the professional learning stuff that you've been doing the last year, you know, COVID has been really challenging for this. What have you found? Cause we can talk, we already know it doesn't work, right? A lot of stuff. What have you found that's been really beneficial? Like maybe what are, what are some of the things that you maybe have adjusted um, in the last year or two um, to really kind of support staff and students? Yeah. Um, Definitely in our structure of professional learning. So we are now calling them collaborative cohorts. Mm -hmm. Um, This is something I heard from whenever I just talked to that first, second and third year teachers. And they said like, hey, I'm part of this high school, like, and I have a great department and I have a great administrator. But I, I want to be able to collaborate with, you know, across town. I mean, across town for us could be 20 miles away and it's still in our district. Right. But like, what are they doing? Like, I want to know. So being part of that, of the one LISD. So, yes, I benefit from being on this campus, but I also benefit because I have 70 other campuses I can collaborate with. That's a benefit to us that we want to take advantage of. And so we have structured collaborative cohorts and um WebEx has been a great tool for us. So yeah, that you, you, 
Beyonce. Yeah, you don't have to drive across. You know, it's really hard for them to connect like that, but we have advantages to doing that. So using technology to connect people and collaborate with people um, and taking away that drive time has been really, really beneficial. Hmm. And we also um, use Canvas as our... Um, um, learning management system. Yes, learn. Thank you. And so um, that we've been able to have some things on there that people can collaborate with each other on. That's been really helpful. So, so okay. So like, I'm, I'm trying to think about like three years ago, right? And if I said, "Hey, we're going to use this platform to like virtually connect," and I don't think that would have gone over as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think mm -hmm. people know. Like, and I understand that. Like, it, it gets rid of some stuff. But how can we you you instead of just I don't know how to put this like I think a lot of schools are like using it because they know how to use it now, but I don't necessarily know if they're using it effectively, right? Like, hey, now that we're meeting in this space, what advantages does this give us other than we don't have to get in our car? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, what advan Like, is there any different advantages you see from that? that space other than like, Hey, it's easier to connect with people that we don't connect with. But like, is there, you know, platforms where we can record some of the stuff? Like I always think about, mm -hmm. um, PL PLCs, right? Like you have the PLC meeting, but if you're not there, then you miss out. But if it's recorded, that opens things up. And especially if someone comes in, you know, halfway through the year, is there access to that? Can they see kind of where, so they're not starting at zero, they can actually see some of the information. Like what, what are some of the things that you've seen that have actually accelerated some of the learning because of this, of the technology. Yes, absolutely. Technology has helped with you know, our whole onboarding process. Now, if you are onboarded in September after school starts, which we hire people, you know, after right. school year, you get the same experience. Um, it's just modified in that it's, you know, there's a video component to it um, right. or there's some other aspect to it just as if you went through onboarding um, with a whole group of people, which before techno before we used it in that way. So we use our um, learning management in that way, as well as videos. Before we did that, you got a not very good onboarding if it, if it happened in September or October. Um, we also, we say that it's just in time learning. That's what we call it. So if something pops up in the middle of the year for different groups and you need um, some, you want some learning around content, we have in person where you can do that. But if it's on a Tuesday at four o'clock or whenever, you might have something else. And so we record those and we drop those in our canvas and just in time. And you can learn on those 24 seven. So if it's at night when you have the time or Sunday afternoon when you want to refresh on that, then we now have that opportunity. You didn't have to come on Tuesday right. at four o'clock in order to get it. So there are lots of benefits that that we have seen um, and just opening the connection and collaboration with people that otherwise you would never be in contact with that you're able to. grow. I mean, just like how we connect on Twitter. Right. With people that we would have never met. And it's the same thing in our district that we're able to use that for. Yeah. And that's like, I think that's kind of how we connected too, right? Like we mm -hmm. actually connected over social media and yeah. then you brought me in and you're like, okay, that's, that's too much. Too <laughs> Let's go back to tweeting to each yeah, other for a little bit. From this guy. Okay. So can I, so I'm just going to ask you like a straight up question. Okay. Don't need a long answer. Was this year harder than the prior for your district? Did you find Absolutely. that or no? Okay. So that's been consistent. Okay. So we are recording this at the end of the 2021, 22 school year going into, and by the time people are listening to this, we're going to 22, 23. Do you think this year will be better than the last? And if you do, why would you say that? And if you don't, like, what are, like, and maybe what are some of the things that we should be concerned about if we're going into it? Because I'm actually, like, it's kind of like, I I guess I'm saying, please predict the future. That, I was about to say, I do not have a crystal ball. I cannot right. predict the future. But right, because like, if I would ask you, if I ask you at the end of 2021, you're like, how could that get any worse, probably, right? right? <laughs> yeah, but I can't tell you, I think the reason why it felt worse was because we were so disappointed in what we thought reality was going to be, that it was going to get better, and it didn't, I mean, it was just, it's never going to be back to how, you know, it was, but never is it 
ever. Like you're always growing and learning and changing and things. So, but um, I think that disappointment of the gap of what we thought it was going to be and what it is. And so really we're trying to think through things of, okay, if something were to come up, are we, how can we be flexible? I think we've learned a lot about flexibility. Right. We've learned a lot about um, adjusting. And then, um, I mean, one of our big focuses for next year is really going to be on the well-being of our staff. Right. Um, because, you know, we've focused so much on kids and attention on kids and what they've gone through and helping them through things. And so how do we help our staff navigate that? And that, you know, I mean, as educators, we have plans, like, we plan things out and we, you know, follow that course. And it really, the plan is not the most important thing as mm -hmm. the process and thinking through the plan so that whenever you have to pivot or eh, that word, um, whenever you have to adjust that it's okay, you're ready for that. And you're not thinking the line is going to be straight. And so when there's a turn, you're so disappointed and upset about it, but there are going to be curves in that road. So how do we create a pathway, but we're flexible on that pathway? I think we're preparing better for that right. um, than we have in the past. I actually, like, I, I, I think for the first time, like, cause everyone's saying it, it's been harder and I understand that, but I don't think I really like, I think I just thought, yeah, it's harder, but I didn't really understand that you put a really great perspective is that it was like really just terror like we had higher expectations for this year and it wasn't as smooth as what we wanted and you know part of that just that kind of disappointment i appreciate you sharing that about um health and wellness of staff right because that's something that's been really huge for me really improved my health over the last while and feel like i can deal with negative stuff and issues way better than i have in the past which is great like it seems to slide off me a little bit because i've taken better care of my health so i gotta ask you this question so we are recording this in May. And what I typically do for recording these podcasts is I uh, record them early and then post them like every Thursday and Sunday. And this, I don't know when this can be posted. I do know that I am speaking to your group in, I think next Friday. So like eight, nine days from today or something like that. Okay. So this will be after this will be air after I talk to your group. Okay. So I'm, I'm putting a spot. You can do this in front of everybody. Okay. What do you hope on that day I achieve with your staff when I speak to them? What do you, what do you like? This is, I hope George is this. That is not putting me on the spot. I know, you know, okay. when, we do, when we design professional learning, we have intended outcomes that we are hoping okay. for. And the reason why we selected you um, for this is because, because this past year has been so hard. Mm -hmm. Um, really you do such a great job at inspiring and motivating people. I mean, like you get your noisemakers sure. get me excited even when I didn't want to be excited. <laughs> and so um, you're so great at that balance of inspiring and motivating and making it fun. But then it's really solid. Like it is serious sure. stuff that you're talking about. It is how yeah. do you provide profound learning for our students? And so, um, you know, we're transitioning out of the, crisis mode. We've been operating in crisis mode for, for a while. Right. And so we've got to get back to what is great teaching? How, how do we get our kids not only back to engaged in their learning, but then empowering them right. in their in the learning process and being part of the classroom? And so um, I know you're going to do that for them. Um, and so that's, that, that's how yeah. you fix everything. That's what you're saying. Yeah, can you, I, I I have confidence in you that you're going to yeah. be able to do that. Wave that magic wand, and it's all going to be great. Well, is is when you said like, "Hey, we've been in crisis mode." It's like, well, we kind of were in crisis mode before, but we were in like super crisis mode. Like it was kind of mm -hmm. like like educate. It wasn't like education like 2019 is like, wow, this is super easy, right? You know, right. not it was like this is really hard stuff, and we're dealing with mm -hmm. a lot of, you know difficult things all the time and then it's like then super crisis comes out right and it's kind of weird because we're like I, I i think part of the the thing that i keep asking is are we like desperately trying to get back to 2019 or are we trying to create something new in 2023 something that we like really aspired to when we first you know graduated from university to go into education what we wanted to be as teachers too so 
uh, I, I am really looking forward to it because I've always had such a, a blast with your um, with your district and uh, connecting with them. And I know that, to be honest, they have such great leadership. I really appreciate you. And I know you did such a good job with them. But for me, when I do those professional learning days, I know people are exhausted. I know people don't want to be there. And I know I'm going to show some challenging stuff. And it's like, you know, you can do that in a fun way too. And mm-hmm. I, 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 I can only do serious for so long. I'm not just talking about when I talk, but when I listen, you got to throw some stuff in there. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I'm pumped. So we'll see. We'll, we can go back. We like, we got it on video. So now we can go back. Did I do the thing that you hoped I did? So we'll see. So I'm, I'm glad the expectation. And is it, and is it then implemented? Yeah. Is, right. Yeah. Cause we want them to then go and do it and change, you know, cause change into the, Absolutely. so okay. I'll I, provide I you feedback on that. Okay. Well, let's get, well, you know, in the two years after you talk to me. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's get away from education. It personally, okay. what has like been, you know, over the last two years, what's like been your biggest growth spot? What's been your biggest obstacle? Like, what have you, you know, what have you learned personally in the last couple of years? Wow, that's a great question. Is. This is this is the only good questions on this podcast. I don't have bad questions. <laughs> and I don't yeah, even have to edit. It's it just good it. questions. This just caused great like I've reflected on all the other stuff with work. I have not reflected on this. That's why um, I asked you. Yeah, but you know, I can tell you. So we have not talked about this, but you know, my daughter is a senior in high school. Oh, really? She's, she's graduating this coming weekend. Oh, this hey. So many graduation of gift. She has served so many of those, but um, I just think the past couple of years, um, really on a personal level, with you having two girls, um, you'll appreciate this is just the reflection of they're so it's so much when you're their parents, and when they get to they're gonna graduate, I'm just like, have I taught her everything? <laughs> that, right. Am I ready for her to go? Have I taught her everything? And so through all this, um all the COVID and stuff, I think it's really allowed us to slow down some and yeah. to really make sure you, I personally, I can only speak for myself, but I personally get so involved in my work and all that stuff that I think it's really caused me to have more balance in um, making sure the things that are really important to me personally, as well as at work that I, I give attention to both. And that's often really, really hard, but, mm-hmm. um, I'm glad that I was, that I was able to do that. Um, because man, when they graduate and go, she's going off to college and leaving me. And it's like, Oh my, I told her just the other day, I was like, I still have stuff to teach you. And she's like, mom, you're going to be teaching me the rest of my life. I was like, okay, as long as you know that, that yes. Okay. Yes. I don't oh. feel like I have to get it all in right now then. Um, so yeah, I think that's a lot of stuff that I've, that's been going through my head personally the past couple of years. Yeah. That's like, you know, that's, <laughs> I'm dreading that already. So, you know, I, I'll like, uh, Kalia will ride around on George's little bike. Right. And it's like for toddlers. And she's like, I'm getting too big for this. I said, I told you to stop growing. I told you to stop growing up. This is now your fault, right? Mm-hmm. And then I like kind of like try to trick her into like staying young forever, which will right. not happen. That worked. Uh, it, it is a uh, it is like a blessing, and I know how passionate you are about your work, and I know how incredible a person you are. So I did want to ask that because I don't. I know that we're not just our work, and I think for me that recalibration was so crucial to the last couple of years that. There, there's in many ways, I know that I'm very blessed to be able to say this. COVID was a good thing for me. Do you know what I mean? Like it made me think about stuff that I maybe didn't take, I took, was taken for granted before. And I, and I appreciate you kind of pointing that out. So the end of the year, you come up on the end of the year. What do you get a break? Do you get any time to do anything or no, that's it. Just, no, we are, we have professional learning that we're, well, and I'm, you know, doing two jobs at the, at the moment. Right. So once that right. transition comes over, um, but yeah, no, we're planning for, um, you know, how do we onboard our new hires and getting things ready for our first year teachers right. so that they can be successful and our leaders, what things can we do for them? So yeah, it's, it's a lot, wow. but I am taking a little, a little tiny, you know, you gotta take a break. Gotta yeah, take a break, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, hey, Sean, I know you're, I, you asked me when we got on this, what are we going to even talk about? I'm like, don't worry about it. Go easy. And here we are half an hour later. How was it? I know that was fun. It was easy, I right? You all, but I could talk to you forever. I mean, I know. Do we just not we, recording what we talk about when we're recording and what we don't record are two different things, right? Th that is, yes, that is, that is accurate. <laughs> but hey, Shauna, you, you are such a blessing in my life. I've always, every time I, I get an email from you, every time I get a connection from you, I always light up. You have that impact. I know if it's just me. Uh, I, I'd be lying. I know that so many people mm -hmm. look at you that way. So um, everyone, if you don't know Shauna, make sure you connect with her. You can see her details down below. But Shauna, thanks for having me. Thanks for, right. for being on the podcast too. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day.